Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's your favorite girl, Juliet from English Prep Class. Now in today's video, I'll basically be showing you how we can go through the five tasks in the PTE speaking. I'll show you how I do it, how I teach my students, and I hope you just um, play this video over and over again so you can practice it for yourself. Actually, if you do not want to pay a tutor, remember I'm a tutor, you can hire me. But if you do not want to pay a tutor, you can just go through this video, play it over and over again, and know what it's like to um, practice it on your own and see how easy it is. Remember, I always leave my email address on my description so that you can contact me. Or, and my Instagram too is also on my description so you can contact me if you want further training or more coaching from me. Okay, guys, let's just delve into this video and let's see how it goes. So the speaking module for me is the most important module. This is because it will give marks across other modules like the reading module and the listening module. Now I'm going to take my time to just elaborate a little or give an overview of this speaking module. Now the speaking module has five tasks which are the read aloud, repeat sentence, describe image, retell lecture and answer short questions. Now these five um, tasks, despite the fact that they are all part of the speaking module or despite the fact that they make up the speaking module, they do not all have the same scoring or they do not all have or do not contribute the same marks to the speaking module. Now the first two, which are the read aloud and the repeat sentence, will add more scores to your speaking module. And not just that, it will also add scores across the other modules, which are the reading module and the listening module. That is why they are very important. I mean, a task like the read aloud will contribute over almost over 30 marks to the reading module. A task like the repeat sentence will contribute over 30 marks or 20 something marks to the listening module. So these tasks are very important. They are more important than the other three, which are the described image, the retail lecture, and answer short questions. Now, for the uh, described image, the retail lecture, and answer short questions, their own marking criteria is slightly different from the marking criteria of the first two, which are the read aloud and the repeat sentence. Now, the read aloud and the repeat sentence, you're scored for three things which are very important, which are the um, oral fluency, content, and pronunciation. Now, what is oral fluency? Oral fluency is the ability to read smoothly, effortlessly, without pauses, eliminating, um, eliminating pauses or hesitations. If you do it really that way, then you'll be sure to get a good score. Now, I have a video that I already did about some of these speaking tasks. You can go back and look at them. I'm going to link up put up some of the link in my description so that you have a better understanding of this speaking module. Now, let us look at pronunciation. Person looks at pronunciation as the ability to pronounce each word like a native English speaker. That is how you say the word. Will, I know, will, will an English speaker understand what you're saying? You know, one time in one of my videos, I said something like, because I come from Africa, there are ways we pronounce words. Like words like banana, we can call it banana. I mean, that's normal for us. Words like bag, we call it bag in Africa. Then, I mean, so if you're going to be pronouncing words in this exam, you're going to pronounce it in such a way that a native English speaker will understand what you're saying. I hope it makes sense. Okay, now let's look at the third criteria, which is the content. Content are the words that make up the sentence or the paragraph that you're reading. So it means that for read aloud and for the repeat sentence, if you can read all the, all the words or the passages, sorry, the paragraph, if you read them out without making mistakes, without... Um, pauses and all that. It means you're going to get good scores for the criteria, for the criteria which are the content, oral fluency, and the pronunciation. Now, content here will be, for instance, if they say the big brown force jumped over the fence, you should be able to also read it that way without removing the or any word there that make up that sentence. That will, that is what will give you your content. Now, for the read aloud and the repeat sentence, you will score um, three marks for content, five marks. For pronunciation and five marks for oral fluency while for the other three which are the described image retail lecture and uh, yeah for those two particularly you score five marks for content five marks for oral fluency and five marks for pronunciation you see the difference now that doesn't mean that the described image nor the retail lecture will give more marks than the read aloud and the repeat sentence the read aloud and the repeat sentence still have more marks than this one they contribute more marks don't forget that one of the enabling skills that you'll be marked for is oral fluency as well as pronunciation. Now, if you do well in your read aloud and your um, 
we tell lecture, sorry, repeat sentence, you're going to see the map very clearly in the enabling skills, especially for oral fluency and pronunciation. I also want to talk about um, the kinds of marking you would have. Now, for a task like the read aloud, the repeat sentence, the described image, and um, the retail lecture, partial kind of scoring applies there. I mean, that's what person says. Partial kind of scoring means that um, if you get everything that is required of you, that is the way you're supposed to um, read it, the way you're supposed to pronounce the words, you're not missing out on any content, you get full marks. But if you do not pronounce the words very well, maybe you pronounce it partially, um, maybe not not like accurately, maybe not to the understanding of a native English speaker, or if you read the sentences and you omit one or two words, or your oral fluency is not just there, then you, you some marks will be taken out from you. That means that for the content, you might end up getting two or one. Then for the oral fluency, you still need to get five. You might end up getting three or two. Those are partial kind of scoring. So those are the kind of um, marking that you see for the PTE speaking. For me, it's still the most single um, important module in the PTE. Do you know that? Did you know that for the PTE speaking, no other modules add mark to the PTE speaking? Yes. In case you never knew, I'm just giving you all this information because I want someone to be able to play this video over and over again and understand how this um, module works. This module is a single module that no other module has scores to. Rather, it contributes scores across other modules. And the PTE speaking does not contribute scores to the PTE writing. Rather, it gives marks to the contribute score or impacts the scores or impacts your reading score and your um, listening score. I hope this makes sense. Now, another thing I want to talk about is, you can see in this video, I'm using a particular website. The reason why I'm using that website is that I have an agreement to the website. Now, I'm not advertising this. Um, they're not paying me to advertise them. But I found that over the years, I've been a tutor. This website is my go-to, if you understand what I mean. In this website, you can uh, register on this website or you can sign up. When you sign up, you have access to their content. Actually, all the modules that make up the PTE. One good thing about this website is that they also give you predictions, like questions that they think might come out in the exam. And sometimes some of my students tell me that, ah, they use the predictions and they came out. Now, this website, the name is APUNI, www.apuni.com. Remember I said, <laughs> this is a disclaimer, they are not paying me for this ad, but I told them I was going to give them credit in this video. Yeah, so they said that that's, that that would be fine by them. So this is the website I use for this video. I want you to go on and um, subscribe to this website. Actually, if you're writing the PTE, subscribe to this website. You can also um, pay for subscriptions, I mean, which is also very good because when you pay for subscriptions, some of your tasks will be marked or all your tasks will be marked. And then you see how you're faring before you can think of maybe trying out the piercing mock. For me, piercing mock still remains the ultimate. But this, this website is also a very good website that can give you um, something similar. To me, this website gives you like 80% or 90% similarity to what you see in the piercing test of English exam. It's a very good website. Now, I know you will say, somebody will say, oh, but Julia, why are you marketing this website? Why are you talking about this website? Where is your own website? <laughs> and I've been talking about Julia's website is coming, English Prep Class website is coming. Now, the website should have been on by now, but because of the new updates of the PT coming up by November 16th, I had to put a break to it. But the website is ready. The content, there'll be a little tweak to the content because we don't know how um, the new updates or the new exam will look like. But all just waiting for November 16th. So that I will take the exam and then I will show you what it's like. Now, anticipate my mock test. I'm going to be doing the new PTE mock test. The Pearson exam has also upgraded their mock test to look like what they have in the real exam. Remember, the exam used to be three hours, but by November 16th, it's going to be two hours. So um, the new Pearson mock or the score test is looking like that, what the exam will be like. So I'm going to be writing it and showing you what it's like. In my next video so anticipate for that video thank you guys hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel it's your favorite girl juliet from english prep class now in today's video i'll basically be showing you how we can go through the five tasks in the pte speaking i'll show you how i do it how i teach my students and i hope you just um play this video over and over again so you can practice it for yourself Actually, if you do not want to pay a tutor, remember I'm a tutor, you can hire me. But if you do not want to pay a tutor, you can just go through this video, play it over and over again and know what it's like to um, practice it on your own and see how easy it is. 
Remember, I always leave my email address on my description so that you can contact me. Or and my Instagram too is also on my description, so you can contact me if you want further training or more coaching from me. Okay, guys, let's just delve into this video and let's see how it goes. So the speaking module for me is the most important module. This is because it will give marks across other modules like the reading module and the listening module. Now I'm going to take my time to just elaborate a little or give an overview of this speaking module. Now the speaking module has five tasks which are the read aloud, repeat sentence, describe image, retell lecture and answer short questions. Now these five um, tasks, despite the fact that they are all part of the speaking module or despite the fact that they make up the speaking module, they do not all have the same scoring or they do not all have or do not contribute the same marks to the speaking module. Now the first two, which are the read aloud and the repeat sentence, will add more scores to your speaking module. And not just that, it will also add scores across the other modules, which are the reading module and the listening module. That is why they are very important. I mean, a task like the read aloud will contribute over almost over 30 marks to the reading module. A task like the repeat sentence will contribute over 30 marks or 20 something marks to the listening module. So these tasks are very important. They are more important than the other three, which are the described image, the retail lecture, and answer short questions. Now, for the uh, described image, the retail lecture, and answer short questions, their own marking criteria is slightly different from the marking criteria of the first two, which are the read aloud and the repeat sentence. Now, the read aloud and the repeat sentence, you're scored for three things which are very important, which are the um, oral fluency, content, and pronunciation. Now, what is oral fluency? Oral fluency is the ability to read smoothly, effortlessly, without pauses, eliminating, um, eliminating pauses or hesitations. If you do it really that way, then you'll be sure to get a good score. Now, I have a video that I already did about some of these speaking tasks. You can go back and look at them. I'm going to link up put up some of the link in my description so that you have a better understanding of this speaking module. Now, let us look at pronunciation. Person looks at pronunciation as the ability to pronounce each word like a native English speaker. That is how you say the word. Will, I know, will, will an English speaker understand what you're saying? You know, one time in one of my videos, I said something like, because I come from Africa, there are ways we pronounce words. Like words like banana, we call it banana. I mean, that's normal for us. Words like bag, we call it bag in Africa. Then, I mean, so if you're going to be pronouncing words in this exam, you're going to pronounce it in such a way that a native English speaker will understand what you're saying. I hope it makes sense. Okay, now let's look at the third criteria, which is the content. Content are the words that make up the sentence or the paragraph that you're reading. So it means that for read aloud and for the repeat sentence, if you can read all the, all the words or the passages, sorry, the paragraph, if you read them out without making mistakes, without... Um, pauses and all that. It means you're going to get good scores for the criteria, for the criteria which are the content, oral fluency, and the pronunciation. Now, content here will be, for instance, if they say the big brown force jumped over the fence, you should be able to also read it that way without removing the or any word there that make up that sentence. That will, that is what will give you your content. Now, for the read aloud and the repeat sentence, you will score um, three marks for content, five marks. For pronunciation and five marks for oral fluency. While for the other three, which are the described image, written lecture, and uh, yeah, for those two particularly, you score five marks for content, five marks for oral fluency, and five marks for pronunciation. You see the difference. Now that doesn't mean that the described image nor the written lecture will give more marks than the read aloud and the repeat sentence. The read aloud and the repeat sentence still have more marks than this one. They contribute more marks. Don't forget that one of the enabling skills that you'll be marked for is oral fluency as well as pronunciation. Now, if you do well in your read aloud and your um, retail lecture, sorry, repeat sentence, you're going to see the mark very clearly in the enabling skills, especially for oral fluency and pronunciation. I also want to talk about um, the kinds of marking you would have. Now, for a task like the read aloud, the repeat sentence, the described image, and um, the retail lecture, Partial kind of scoring applies there. I mean, that's what person says. Partial kind of scoring means that um, if you get everything that is required of you, that is the way you're supposed to um, read it, the way you're supposed to pronounce the words, you're not missing out on any content, you get full marks. 
But if you do not pronounce the words very well, maybe you pronounce it partially, um, maybe not, not like accurately, maybe not to the understanding of a native English speaker, or if you read the sentences and you omit one or two words, or your oral fluency is not just there, then you, you, some marks will be taken out from you. That means that for the content, you might end up getting two or one. Then for the oral fluency, you still need to get five. You might end up getting three or two. Those are partial kind of scoring. So those are the kind of um, marking that you see for the PTE speaking. For me, it's still the most single um, important module in the PTE. Do you know that? Did you know that for the PTE speaking, no other modules add mark to the PTE speaking? Yes. In case you never knew, I'm just giving you all this information because I want someone to be able to play this video over and over again and understand how this um, module works. This module is a single module that no other module has scores to. Rather, it contributes scores across other modules. And the PTE speaking does not contribute scores to the PTE writing. Rather, it gives marks to it contribute score or impacts the scores or impacts your reading score and your um, listening score. I hope this makes sense. Now, another thing I want to talk about is, you can see in this video, I'm using a particular website. The reason why I'm using that website is that I have an agreement to the website. Now, I'm not advertising this, um, they're not paying me to advertise them, but I found that over the years, I've been a tutor. This website is my go-to, if you understand what I mean. In this website, you can uh, register on this website or you can sign up. When you sign up, you have access to their content. Actually, all the modules that make up the PTE. One good thing about this website is that they also give you predictions, like questions that they think might come out in the exam. And sometimes some of my students tell me that, ah, they use the predictions and they came out. Now, this website, the name is APUNI, www.apuni.com. Remember I said, <laughs> this is a disclaimer, they're not paying me for this ad, but I told them I was going to give them credit in this video. Yeah, so they said that that's, that would be fine by them. So this is the website I use for this video. I want you to go on and um, subscribe to this website. Actually, if you're writing the PTE, subscribe to this website. You can also um, pay for subscriptions, I mean, which is also very good because when you pay for subscriptions, some of your tasks will be marked or all your tasks will be marked. And then you see how you're faring before you can think of maybe trying out the piercing mock. For me, piercing mock still remains the ultimate. But this, this website is also a very good website that can give you um, something similar. To me, this website gives you like 80% or 90% similarity to what you see in the piercing test of English exam. It's a very good website. Now, I know you will say, somebody will say, oh, but Julia, why are you marketing this website? Why are you talking about this website? Where is your own website? <laughs> and I've been talking about Julia's website is coming, English Prep Plus website is coming. Now, the website should have been on by now, but because of the new updates of the PT coming up by November 16th, I had to put a break to it. But the website is ready. The content, there'll be a little tweak to the content because we don't know how um, the new updates or the new exam will look like. But all just waiting for November 16th. So that I will take the exam and then I will show you what it's like. Now, anticipate my mock test. I'm going to be doing the new PTE mock test. The Pearson exam has also upgraded their mock test to look like what they have in the real exam. Remember, the exam used to be three hours, but by November 16th, it's going to be two hours. So um, the new Pearson mock or the score test is looking like that, what the exam will be like. So I'm going to be writing it and showing you what it's like. In my next video so anticipate for that video thank you guys also you can do it yourself you can practice it yourself as you play this video over and over again so you know how you can read and also take examples of the other tasks not just to read aloud now we're going to make the real exam where you're giving 35 seconds to read the passage or the paragraphs before you and then you hear a beep and then you begin to read it to um, read it out to the computer or read it out on your mouthpiece. That is what we're going to be mimicking in this practice. So let's go, guys. So this is 35 seconds. I'll be reading this to myself. Bills are the longest living mammals. Two reports of maximum length and weight vary from one account to the out to another. The reason why I'm reading it to myself, I get used to the words. So I don't make mistake, I don't hesitate and lose my scores for my oral fluency. And also try to get used to the words so I know how I'll be able to pronounce them. So I get all my scores for pronunciation. And I also try to get the scores for the content because one score can be a game changer, like I always tell my students. Okay, guys.
Blue whales are the largest living mammals. Though reports of maximum length and weight vary from one account to another, Atlantic blue whales are known to have reached lengths to 100 feet and weights of over 150 tons before stocks were severely depleted by whaling operations. Not Atlantic blue whales may be expected to reach lengths of 80 to 85 feet. No pauses, no hesitations. I just read it smoothly, even my content. I made sure I didn't miss out on any of the content while I read, okay. So I'm going to do another one, still mimicking the real exam. Um, chasm extremely, chasm plays an important, an extremely important role in the production of plant tissues and enables plants to grow better. It is responsible for keeping the cell walls of plants together. It is also crucial in activating signals that coordinate certain cellular activities. Calcium also increases the resistance to external attacks and increases the feed value of forage crops to livestock. Okay. Calcium plays an extremely important role in the production of plant tissues and enables plants to grow better. Calcium plays an extremely important role in the production of plant tissues and enables plants to grow better. It is responsible for keeping the cell walls of plants together. It is also crucial in activating signals that coordinate certain cellular activities. Calcium also increases the resistance to external attacks and increases the feed value of forage crops to livestock. No hesitations, no pauses. So this is the way you're expected to read an exam day. I'm going to be doing several of these for you and the other tasks so that you get used to how it is. So you can play this over and over again. And um, you can, oh yeah, and then you can see what score you can get. Sorry, you can play this over and over again and um, get used to my tone of voice, like my pace, not just my tone, my pace. I'm not reading it flatly. I'm adding a bit of life to it. And that's the way you're expected to read. And the reason why I'm doing this, for some of you that cannot really afford a one-on-one -on -one tutor, you can come to YouTube and watch this video over and over again. Conscientiousness is a fundamental. Conscientiousness is a fundamental personality trait. A conscientious person is good at self-regulation and impulse control. This trait influences whether you will set and keep long-term goals, deliberate over choices, behave courteously or impulsively, and take obligations to others seriously. Now, you see, I was a bit not, I didn't read so smoothly here. I stuttered a bit because I didn't take time to look at the test before me. So that is the reason why you should try to read the test before you at least once before the beep. Now, one secret here is, after reading it once to yourself, then go back from the, to the beginning again and see if you can get used to those words and get used to the pronunciation. You can actually try this out in the mock exam to see how well you will score here. Now, this read aloud will also add score, not just to your PTE speaking, it will also add score to your PTE um, reading. Yes, and not just one score. You see, I'm gonna be attaching a video of mine to this, where I showed you how much score the PTE read aloud can um, impact your reading score. I don't know if you've seen that video. You can go back and watch that video after this. So it should tell you how seriously you need to take this task. The final question about global order for this generation is whether China and United States can escape Thucydides' trap. The Greek historian's metaphor reminds us of the attendant dangers when a rising power rivals a ruling power, as Athens challenged Sparta in ancient Greece. The defining question about global order for this generation is whether China and the United States can escape Thucydides' trap. The Greek historian's metaphor reminds us of the attendant dangers when a rising power rivals a ruling power, as Athens challenged Sparta in ancient Greece, or as Germany did Britain a century ago. Now, I see the way I read that. Uh, I, I'm not used to that word. Something like that. Uh, but that's why you, you should read it to yourself. You get used to the word. You get used to the word and you don't make a mistake. Okay, so I'll take yet another example. When a major disaster strikes, the first people on the scene are often local organizations, residents and volunteers. They are often faced with the retrieval and immediate management of dead bodies before forensic experts can arrive. 
when a major disaster strikes, the first people on the scene are often local organizations. You can see I'm trying to make sure that my pronunciation is good so that anybody can understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying local, I'm saying local. When a major disaster strikes, the first people on the scene are often local organizations, residents and volunteers. They are often faced with the retrieval and immediate management of dead bodies before forensic experts can arrive. I'm taking my time to pronounce my words so I can get a high score in pronunciation. Remember, for on this um, task, you're being graded for oral fluency, pronunciation, and content. And you get five, five marks each for both oral fluency and pronunciation. So there's need for you to do this task very well. Now I'm going to put, I'm going to play, I'm going to do yet another one so that you get used to it. You can play this video over and over again. It can help you to get used to how to read on exam day. A smoking ban is a public policy that includes criminal laws and health regulations that prohibit smoking in certain public places and workspaces. There are varying definitions of smoking employed in this legislation. The strictest definition defines smoking as being the inhalation of any tobacco substance, while the loosest defines smoking as possessing any lit tobacco product. A smoking ban is a public policy that includes criminal laws and health regulations. A smoking ban is a public policy that includes criminal laws and health regulations that prohibit smoking in certain public places and workspaces. There are varying definitions of smoking employed in this legislation. The strictest definitions define smoking as being the inhalation of any tobacco substance, while the losers define smoking as possessing any lead tobacco product. You can see I'm trying to make sure that whether it's S, I make sure I, I use I put that S sound there. Whether it's ED, I make sure it's there. You see, all these things are the things that the computer looks out for. It's a computer-based exam. So you have to read the test just as it is, so you can get all the score that you need. Okay, guys, so this is another one. I'm just going to go ahead right now and um, read it to myself. In the fast changing world of modern healthcare, the job of a doctor is more and more like the job of a chief executive. The people who run hospitals and physicians practices don't just need to know medicine, they must also be able to balance budgets, motivate a large and diverse staff and make difficult marketing and legal decisions. In the fast changing world of modern healthcare. In the fast changing world of modern healthcare, the job of a doctor is more and more like the job of a chief executive. The people who run hospitals and physicians' practices don't just need to know medicine. They must also be able to balance budgets, motivate a large and diverse staff, and make difficult marketing and legal decisions. You can see I'm reading very clearly. All my words are standing out. You can hear every word I'm reading. I'm not rushing over. I'm not reading. In the fast changing world of modern healthcare, the job of a doctor is more and more like the job of a chief as if I'm being chased by a dead. That's not the way to read. That's not the way to go. So this is the way to go. Make sure that every word there, you're able to pronounce them. Make sure that every word there, you're able to read them out loud. I'm going to take two more examples and that'll be it for the read aloud. Like I said, you can practice this over and over again. You can play this video over and over again. So you see the way I read. The development of easy to use statistics is being taught and learned. Students can make transformations of variables create graphs of distributions of variables and select among statistical analysis, all at the click of a button. However, even with these advancements, students sometimes still find statistics to be an odious task. Mm. Development of easy to use statistics is being taught and learned. Students can make change. The development of easy to use statistics is being taught and learned. Students can make transformations of variables, create graphs of distributions of variables, and select among statistical analysis all at the click of a button. However, even with these advancements, students sometimes still find statistics to be an odious task. See, that one was a bit tricky. There were a lot of things to say there, a lot of S, a lot of ways that ended with S. Sometimes students' advancements but I took my time to make sure I pronounce them right. So I'll take this and then one more, and that'll be the end of the read aloud exercise. I hope uh, my students will be able to see this 
and watch this video played over and over again um, so that they get used to how to read. First discovered in 2007, first radio bursts continue to defy explanation. These cosmic chips last for a thousand minutes, a thousand of a second. The characteristics of the radio pulses suggested that they came from galaxies billions of light years away. Hmm. First discovered in 2007, fast radio bursts continue to defy explanation. These cosmic chips last for a thousand of a second. The characteristics of the radio pulses suggested that they came from galaxies billions of light years away. However, new works points to a clear, much closer origin, flaring stars within our own galaxy. Now, I made a mistake somewhere. I didn't go back to correct myself. I just carried on. That is what is expected of you. Then I'll take the last example, and then that'll be it for this practice. Ever since I remember, Father woke up at 5.30 every morning, made us all breakfast and read newspaper. After that, he would go to work. He worked as a writer. It was a long time before I realized he did this for a living. Okay, this is quite straightforward. This is, I think this is the easiest thing I have read here today. Um, okay, ever since I remembered, Father woke up at 5.30 every morning, made us all breakfast and read newspaper. After that, he would go to work. Ever since I remembered, Father woke up at 5.30 every morning, made us all breakfast and read newspaper. After that, he would go to work. He worked as a writer, it was a long time before I realized he did this for a living. Okay, so this is where I'm going to be stopping for this practice. You can send me feedback if you want um, more, if you want me to um, show you more things to do. Now you can, can chat me up on, on Instagram at English underscore prep class. You can send me messages. I think I also used to leave my email in the description of every video I upload. You can also send me feedback if you try this and um, what you think of this. And um, if you need help, um, for the assistance from me, I won't hesitate to help you. Okay, guys, so we're going to do um, samples of um, um, another task, which is the repeat sentence. I'm just going to do a couple of them. Um, yeah, and then you can see how I do them. I won't say them flatly. I just wanted to um, see how, what I'm going to do. I'm doing them here for you. So um, you can practice it on your own. Yeah, but if you want further assistance, like I said before, I can always be here to help you. You can just send me an email and let's think of how we can, we can organize a class for you. Students are not allowed with mobile phones in the examination hall. Students are not allowed with mobile phones in the examination hall. And that is the way you say, just as the speaker said it. Now, I'm not trying to form accent, but I'm trying to um, talk as bold as the, as the um, speaker. Remember, I always say, uh, it's not what you say that is important, but it's how you say what you say. That is what matters. So I'm not trying to mimic the speaker's accent. However, I'm trying to um, put stress or apply stress on words that she applies stress and try to give life to the sentence where she give life to the sentence. The scheme has been fraught with problems from the start. The scheme has been fraught with problems from the start. You hear that? Just repeat. Now, I want to say, I want to say something. Now, we are all humans. We have a tendency of um, forgetting some of the words, especially when they are longer than three seconds. Like what I've been doing so far is just about three seconds. And when these things are longer than three seconds, there's a tendency that you, know, you might forget some of the words. And even if you forget, just go on and say the ones you remembered. Because I think I've done a video on this repeat sentence and what Pearson says about you omitting some of the words. Now, if you omit some of the words, you will not get all the answers for your content. And for this task, you get three marks for contents, five marks for pronunciation, five marks for oral fluency. Again, the content is not, will not give you much mark like the pronunciation and the oral fluency. So the emphasis on this task will be more on your oral fluency and your pronunciation. I'm going to take yet another example. We blanch almonds by soaking their skins in boiling water. We blanch almond by soaking their skin in boiling water. Yeah, straight up. 
I didn't miss anything here. But even if you miss, that's not the end. A public of relation exercise mm-hmm. improves the relationship between the public and an organization. I barely remember what she said. The public, as, the public relation exercise improves the relationship between the public and the worker. Sorry, I was talking, so I didn't get everything. But yeah, this is a typical example of when you do, you do not get everything that was said. You can just say all the ones that you remembered and then get all those calls for those ones you remembered. Let's take more example. You can get to the college by bus, train, or car. You can get to the college by bus, train, or car. Yeah, exactly what she said. But even if you didn't get all, but get some of the words. Don't drink any alcohol, even if you drive carefully. Don't drink any alcohol, even if you drive carefully. Just the way she said it, how she said it. Fighter jets, helicopters, and warships will guard against security threats. Fighter jets, helicopter, and companies will guide against security threats. Sorry, <laughs> I was distracted. I didn't get out. That is what happens in the exam. So that is why I teach my students, don't get distracted. Just listen. Listen with your mind, listen with your soul and your heart. If you do it that way, you'll get all the responses. Yes. Now, because I was distracted, I was thinking of the next steps to do here. I, I missed out on some of the words that were said. So this can happen. You just have to be careful. Students who'd like to help produce the college newspaper should come to a meeting tomorrow. Students that would like to produce the college newspaper should come to the meeting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Read the instructions carefully before you start writing your essay. Read the instructions carefully before you start writing the essay. Exactly what he said, that is what is expected of you. So I'm doing this just to show you how it's done. There is a considerable disagreement about the main cause of the revolution. Sorry, I'm going to do another one. I was stuck so I didn't get that one. So um, yeah, so oral fluency is important. Try to follow the oral fluency, like maintain that flow that the the speaker is using. You know, that's what I've been trying to do here. Maintain that flow. If you maintain it and then you maintain the pronunciation, the way the words were pronounced, you'll get all your score. Even if you don't get all the content, especially when the sentence is a long one, just say the things you can remember. Today's lecture on modern American literature has been canceled. Today's... (laughs) Sorry, I'm going to redo this one. Oh my God, this one was so easy. Oh God. (laughs) Today's lecture on modern American literature has been canceled. Today's lecture on modern American literature has been canceled. Yeah, that was what he said. So please try to get everything that was said if you can. But if you can't, don't beat up yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself. Just say what you can say. Remember in the exam, you don't have this opportunity of redoing. Why I can redo it? Because this website, you can redo some of the uh, some of the um of the questions. That's why I can go back to review. But in the real exam, you don't have that luxury. So you have to listen. The library will stay open until midnight during the exam period. The library will stay open until midnight during the exam period. The same pace, the same pronunciation of words. The college provides an advice service to support students with financial. Students. Next week. This college has a good reputation. There are the causality. If their aspirations are not achieved, they become gloomy. If our aspirations are not achieved, they become gloomy. Exactly what was said. Mm -hmm. Fungi are important in the process of decay, which returns ingredients to the Sorry, I'm just going to redo. The plan raised a lot of money and improved the economy of the country. I think the plan raised a lot of money and improved the uh, budget of the country. (laughs) I wasn't listening. Please don't be like me. I needed to pay attention. What I want to just show you here is how you can repeat these sentences, you know, on your own. And yeah, I join just that is where that is why you need to practice. Once you practice, you'll be able to repeat the sentences on your own without much ado about it. Privacy issues surrounding mobile computers are becoming complex. 
privacy issue over computer are becoming complex. Now I said the things I could recall. So I will still get my mark. I might not get all the marks. My mom made a milkshake with frozen bananas and chocolate sauce. My mom made a milkshake with frozen banana and chocolate sauce. The chocolate chip cookie smelled so good that I ate one without asking. The chocolate cookie smelled so good that I ate one without asking. See, the thing is, if you pay attention, I'm just showing you something here that you should really emulate. If you pay attention, you will get what was said. So for this task and the other one we have just done, the first two, that's the read aloud and the repeat sentence, you have to put in all efforts because this task will, will help improve your score, even in reading and in listening, not just your speaking score. And they're not just going to improve your score, maybe giving 10 marks or five marks to those other modules I just called. They will increase the marks across those modules over, with over 20 points. So there's need for you to do this task seriously. Now, I was laughing, but I was able to show you something that you can copy from. Now, if you listen with everything you've got, without distractions, without um, then distractions and all that, you can get what was said. Now, if, if you don't get everything that was said, just say the ones you heard. Where you get a zero is when you didn't say anything. But if you say anything, be able to get the, be able to get um, everything that was said. So I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and do some examples of describe image. Describe image is the third task in the PTE speaking. It will only ask God to your PTE speaking. So I'm just trying to look at the image before me. If you want to take note of, that, of the image, you can take down some important features you might want to talk about. And with the template I had shared in my previous video, you can do this task. Now, watch me do this. The image before me shows bar chart of which really the richest are. And uh, there are some great features that make up the image and they include Switzerland and United States, Hong Kong and Australia, the Netherlands and Belgium. The, in addition, Switzerland, United States, Hong Kong and Australia and the Netherlands have other information like $273,000, $505,420, and $482,760. In conclusion, this image is highly educative and interesting. See, I spoke for like 30 seconds. Remember I said, just keep it simple. Speak between 20 to 30 seconds. Now, with the help of this template, which I have, it's easy for you to navigate your way. I'm going to do another example. And you're going to see what you can try it out on your own using the template I shared in my previous video. It's um, easy, straightforward, and all that, yeah. So it's talking about animal-related deaths in Australia per year. Talking about cow, bull, dog, kangaroo, bee, shark, snake, crocodile, ostrich. You still use the same template to describe this image that is before me. The image before me shows bar chart of animal related deaths in Australia from data from 2010, from 2000 to 2010. And there are some great information that make up the image and they include cowbell, dog, kangaroo, they include bee, shark and snake, they include crocodile and ostrich. Uh, in addition, cowbell, dog, kangaroo and bee have other features like 3.9, 3.2, 2.1, 1.9 and the others. In conclusion, this image is highly educative and interesting. Let's see how many seconds I used. I spoke in 30 seconds and I was even structuring. Remember, this is still, this is also a speaking task. So you cannot afford to stutter. You cannot afford to um, make mistakes. You just have to speak fluently. You have to speak without um, pauses and all that. Let's just look at the next information and talk about it. Now look at this, we're talking about uh, mobile brands in Australia, popular mobile phone brands in Australia from year 2009 to 2019. Talked about Samsung, Apple, Google, and others. Talked about Apple, Samsung, LG, and others. I'm going to use the template and I'm going to describe it. Now what this template does, it just helps you to speak fluently. It's not like you cannot describe it other ways. You know, now the image before me shows popular mobile phone brands in Australia from year 2009 to 2019. There are other great features that make up this image and they include Apple and Samsung, LG and others. They include Google and others. They also include Samsung from 2019, from 29 to 2019. 
In addition, Apple and Samsung, um, LG and others have some percentages like 10%, 15%, 55%, 42% and the others. In conclusion, this image is highly educative and interesting. I spoke almost the same 30 seconds, 30, 31 seconds, you know, because I'm probably looking at the things I have here before me. Now, but if we constant practice, you're going to get used to the templates. And even if you decide not to use the template, remember templates are not casting stones. Like I have said in my previous video, you can always come up with other things, other ways you can describe the image that is before you. I can do this in different ways. The image that is before me looks very colorful and interesting. I see things like Apple, Samsung, Google, and others from 2009, 2019. I see 10%, 15% for 2%. The bar chart describes something like, oh, this is a bar chart. It's got something like 55%, LG, others. I mean, just talk about the features that you see. You must not use a template. The only reason why I'm using this template that I have used this template, my students have used this template and they have passed. And I've tried this template in the PSC mode and I had a good score in my PTE speaking. So that's why I'm using it. Now, if you have tried out your templates and they are working, you can also use them. Templates are not casting stones. It can be made by just anybody, even you. Let's look at another example and then we'll just go ahead to other tasks. Look at this. What's most powerful passports? Hmm. Let's take it very, let's look at this one and just describe it. Uh, well, they have um, countries like Japan, Singapore, South Korea, Germany, Italy, Finland, Spain, and Luxembourg. Okay. The image before me shows the world's most powerful passports and other relevant information. There are some great features that make up this image and they include Japan, Singapore, South Korea, and Germany, Italy, Finland, and Spain. In addition, they also have numbers like 193, 192, 191, and 190. They also have things like number of visa-free countries passport holders can visit in 2021. In conclusion, this image is highly educative and interesting. I actually spoke, stopped at 25 seconds in this one because I didn't go into the template proper like i said templates are not casting stones so what you do you have to time yourself tell yourself the features you're going to talk about and don't dwell so much on too many um, features especially if you have too many information here you can see it wasn't everything here that i mentioned because you can see some numbers repeating themselves i said something like 191 190 193 and the others and i didn't start mentioning japan singapore south korea germany italy finland spain Luxembourg. i mean you get tired doing that but i was able to call some of the things i I saw here or some of the things that are before me, you know, which is very important. Let's look at yet another example. Hmm. He's talking about um, GNH. Uh, what's GNH now? It didn't say just wrote GNH. So my job is not to go start looking for the meaning of GNH. I'm just going to stick to every information that is before me that is given to me. I'm not going to start formulating in my head, is it granular net health or something? I, it doesn't concern because that information was not given here. So I'm just going to look at all the information that I have here. And it starts that the image before me shows an image and other relevant information. There are some great features that make up the image and they include psychological well-being and health, time use education, cultural diversity and resilience, good governance and community vitality, as well as others. In addition, this image also has other things like living standards, ecological diversity and resilience. It has GNH, it has time use and other things in the image. In conclusion, this image is highly educative and interesting. It's how I was able to navigate. I spoke for between 29 seconds to 30 seconds, which is very ideal. So the more you practice this task, the easier it becomes. It's not casting stones. So you just see how much you can speak. The goal here is speaking fluently and pronouncing the words um, very well, so that anybody that listens to you can understand what you're saying. That is what is important. Now, this is the last one I'm going to be looking at today before we go over to the retail lecture. It's talking about Arctic and Antarctic. Antarctic. Okay, so about planets, but they didn't say they just wrote Arctic and Antarctic. So I'm just going to stick to what is before me here without beating about the bush. The image before me shows the Arctic and the Antarctic and other relevant information. There are some great features that make up the image and they include average yearly temperature, animals, people and population. Two million native people call the Arctic home. Penguins do not live in the Arctic. In addition, 
This attic and the Antarctic have other information like um, the Antarctic is the coldest place, the Antarctic is the bottom of the earth, the Arctic is the top of the earth, and other things in the image. In conclusion, this image is highly educative and interesting. Almost the same time that I keep stopping, it is 30 seconds, 31 seconds and all that. Remember you're giving 40 seconds to speak and I said, do not use up the entire 40 seconds. It just buys you more time to put yourself together and prepare for the next task or the next um, describe image or whatever that is coming up next. So I hope this makes sense and I hope it's clear enough. This is how you're going to describe the image. It's not something difficult. You're not going to start cracking your head. What really happens here? The instruction says, well, look at the image and describe it in, in 40 seconds. They give you 25 seconds to practice or to prepare. And then you hear a beep and you begin to describe the image. Just stick to what you have before you. If there are too many information, you don't have to talk about all of them. Just stick to what is before you. In that way, you get a good score. Yeah. Okay, guys, so we're going to do some practice of the retail lecture. I have done a video on retail lecture. I'm going to be leaving all the links, all the videos I have done prior to this time so that you can go check them out. It'll make more sense once you, be, once you see this video because everything will add up and yeah, you'll be able to practice and get scores. Now let's look at um, this um, retail lecture, which is a fourth task in the PTE speaking. Let's do a few examples of it. And yeah, and see how easy it is. Most Americans take energy for granted, but for many families, maintaining access to reliable and affordable energy is a persistent challenge and a significant material hardship. This is a problem referred to as energy insecurity, and it affects millions of American households each year. We have found that energy insecurity is a growing and vexing problem among low-income households, and the COVID-19 pandemic has made this problem worse. Our analysis finds that, that there are disparities in rates of energy insecurity across various socio-demographic groups. Black and Hispanic households, for example, are significantly more likely to experience energy insecurity and face utility disconnection than white households. So too are households with young children, individuals that require electronic medical devices, and those in dwellings with inefficient or poor conditions. Households that cannot pay for energy are unable to power electronic learning or medical devices, keep perishable, healthy food in the refrigerator, or maintain safe body temperatures. Under conditions of extreme heat or cold, people can suffer from mental and physical health consequences, including the possibility of death. Strategies for coping with uncomfortable temperatures, such as burning trash or sitting in one's car with the heat running, can lead to tragic outcomes as well. Our research underscores the importance of public policy that targets energy insecurity and its underlying causes. Weatherization assistance, incentives for residential solar power, energy bill assistance, and utility disconnection protections are all viable strategies for helping the millions of households across the country that are currently unable to pay their energy bills. So they give you 10 seconds, then you use the template, and I was able to get a lot of words here, which I'm going to use in the template. Okay. The audio that was played was very interesting. It talked about energy challenge. It talked about access to reliable energy, material hardship, and energy insecurity. The speaker talked about energy insecurity, low income household, and she talked about black and Hispanic household. The audio talked about electronic medical devices, power electronic learning, and other things. The audio just centered around energy challenge and paying energy bills and how difficult it is. I was able to speak for 27 to 28 seconds. Let's say 28 seconds. So I was just able to get most of the keywords that she used in, in the, um, in the, that's the audio played. And he heard me saying that the speaker said this and the speaker said that that is all they want me to talk about. They wanted to, to retell the lecture. So I was able to get down. I can't even count here. I've got a lot of words here I was able to note down. Yeah, which I now fixed in the retail lecture template. I'm going to be putting the retail lecture template out here very soon too. For one of my students, uh, someone that started following me on YouTube that requested for it. Okay, so I'm going to do another one. So you see how it is. Now I didn't stutter. Huh? Remember you're still being graded for fluency and pronunciation. And in fact, for this task and um, the described image, the one before this one, you have five points for content, five points for 
um, for um, oral fluency and five points for pronunciation. The thing is, you have to take them seriously. This task will ask us to your listening. It will also ask us to speak in. And I guess the content part is the part that will really give those scores to speak in. It doesn't add too much of scores to speak in, but remember, it has at least more than one. So it means that it can help you get a high score in your PTE listening. So take it seriously. Let's do another example, like two more, and then let's see what it's like. Over the last decade, the share of the world's population living under autocracy increased from 48 to 68 percent. It is more important than ever to understand how autocracies work. Autocrats have a keen interest in promoting the idea that they are all powerful. Whereas leaders in democracies can be removed via elections, leaders in autocracies can lose office in two ways, via a coup or popular revolt. To make matters worse, autocrats can rarely address both threats at the same time. They often have to choose whether to reward their elite cronies to prevent a coup or the masses to prevent a revolt. This generates many difficult trade-offs. Cheat too little on elections and risk losing office, but cheat too much and signal weakness to your opponents. Use corruption to reward your elite friends, but not so much that it slows economic growth and sparks a revolt. Manipulate the media, but not so much that people turn off the television. Repress your political opponents, but not so much that it causes a backlash. Empower the security services, but not so much that they can overthrow you. Rulers who fail to resolve these trade-offs often suffer the consequences. Okay. The audio that was played was very interesting and it talked about autocracy. It talked about 48 to 68% gain interest and all powerful. The speaker talked about via coup or popular revolt. The speaker talked about reward elite cronies, risk losing office and use of corruption. The audio that was centered around autocracy and economic growth and how they manipulate media. In conclusion, this is a very interesting audio. Now I just added that one, which is not bad, but I was able to get down all the points that the speaker made, the relevant points that she made. Now, there's something you have to note here. I wasn't saying is or was, like I wasn't, um, the, the key words I wrote down was not behind, she, words, you know, her, all those things. I was able to get words like autocracy, that's the topic, I was able to get keen interest or powerful, via coup or popular revolt, reward elite cronies, risk losing office, use corruption, economic growth, manipulate media, empower security. I mean, those kind of words, like, you know, those are the key words that were mentioned in the audio. And that is what is expected of you. You don't have to go writing things like was, is, she, her, you know, those things are not the things that were mentioned. Now, um, was I able to retell this lecture? Yes. Did the speaker talk about autocracy? Yes. Did I talk about autocracy? Yes. Did that say something about 48 to 68% when she was talking about it? Yes. Did she also say something about via coup or popular revolt? Yeah, she did mention that. Remember, I'm just retelling a lecture and I'm flowing, I'm not hesitating, I'm not doing, um, um, she said, um, um, oh, sorry, it was a mistake. I think the speaker now said autocracy. I mean, if you do it like that, you will lose score. So maintain that flow. Once you maintain that flow, um, you're going to get a high score in your fluency. No hesitations, no pauses, try to pronounce the words very well. And you're going to get a high score in fluency. I'm going to take just the, another last one. And then before we go look at another task, which is the last task. That one is pretty easy. Are you a chocolate lover? Even true chocoholics might not know what their favorite treat has in common with yogurt, cheese, and wine. Its flavors come from fermentation. Fermentation is the process of improving a food through the controlled activity of microbes. The food you know as chocolate starts its life as the seeds of football-shaped fruit. Farmers scoop out the seeds and pulp into piles or boxes. The seeds are now called cacao beans. They ferment for about a week before they're dried, roasted, and crushed with sugar until smooth and ready to eat. Let's go back to that fermentation step. Cacao fermentation is a multi-stage process. The first stage involves yeast. Just like the yeast in your beer, yeast in a cacao fermentation produces alcohol by digesting the sugary pulp around the beans. As the pulp breaks down, oxygen seeps in, and oxygen-loving bacteria take over. The bacteria generate acetic acid from the alcohol that the yeast produced. 
Acetic acid causes biochemical changes as it soaks into the beans and that has a major impact on flavor. Finally, as the acid slowly evaporates and the sugars are all used up, spore-forming organisms begin to grow. Cacao is a wild fermentation. Farmers rely on natural microbes in their environment to create unique local flavors. Okay. <laughs> so it was a bit scattered for me where I wrote it, but let's see how it goes. The audio that was played was very interesting. I talked about chocoholics. He talked about chocolate lover and yogurt. He talked about fermentation, controlled activity, and microbes. The speaker talked about scoop out seeds, cacao beans, roasted and crusted with sugar. The speaker also reiterated on multi state process and yeast alcohol. She talked about the R oxygen seeps in the bacteria generates acid and the image of impact on flavor. The audio was just centered around chocoholics and how the spore forming organisms and natural microbes. Okay, so I spoke for 28 seconds. That's simple, straightforward. I was able to get the major points in this topic and I wasn't hesitating. I just spoke effortlessly, less flawlessly, especially using the keywords I got from the audio. I hope this makes sense to someone. You can practice with this. You can play the video over and over again. Try to get what I'm saying and then try to put it in into your own words. You can see that I'm not rushing. I didn't say, the audio was real. Was that interesting? Was that about? No. Slow down, Charlie. <laughs> slow down, guy. If you slow down, you're able to get score for your pronunciation and you're able to get score for your um for your fluency. And I didn't also say the audio that was played was very interesting. I wasn't sleeping on it and it wasn't boring when I was talking about it. So these are the things that you look out for once you begin to um do this task. It's straight to the point. Okay, guys, this brings me to the last task in the PTE speaking. Um, it's a very um, simple task because they'll be asking you basically um, general questions ranging from things like uh, who makes um, clothes with fabrics, um, a person who cooks in a, in a big restaurant, a big hotel is called what? I mean, those kind of general questions of how many um, planets do we have or how many, you know, just, just simple questions that you can just um, um, think of and um, just say them. Now, the thing here is person says you shouldn't um, give them a sentence. For instance, they ask um, a person who makes um, clothes out of fabric is called who? Let's say a tailor is the answer. And then you now say he is called a tailor or she is called a seamstress. You know, that's not how you need to answer this question. You just have to go straight forward. Just say tailor or you can say seamstress. You know, so in just one word or few words, like two words or so, you can just say your answer. Another thing here is if you do not know it, if you do not know the answer, just don't keep quiet. Don't say no idea. You know, I have no idea, but just don't keep quiet. Just say something. You can repeat back the question, but, but don't just say anything because if you don't say anything, then uh, it to be taken like you didn't do anything and it's zero for you. I know someone will say, well, what if you don't get the answer? Now, even if you don't get the answer, but at least you said something, you know, something will be recorded for you. Well, hopefully, you know, so let's just try out some of them. Let's try about 10 more, 15, as the case may be, and just so that you have a feel of what the exam is. Now for this one, uh, we don't know if um, oral fluency or pronunciation is being checked out for. Nobody really knows because some um, person didn't really state that. Now let's see. This is what it looks like. What do we call a person who leaves college before finishing the studies? Dropouts. Yeah, person is called a dropout. Or like I just said, dropout. You don't have to go and say the person is called a dropout. Just a dropout. Listen to the question. I want the What do we call the money an employer pay an employee because of the damage caused in work? Compensation. If you don't know, you just say I have no idea, or you just say employer pays employee. What do we call a group of sheep or birds? I think that one is flock. Flock, yeah, you know, a flock of sheep, a flock of birds. This we did that one in, in secondary school or high what school. What do we call a political institution of a country that is responsible for governing the country? Um, government, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. What is BA for, such as history and literature? Um, Bachelor of Arts. What do we call the opposite of destiny? Um, opposite of destiny? 
Now, did you see what I just did? I don't know what the answer is, but <laughs> opposite of destiny. I don't know, I can't even think of what it is, you know? So I just said opposite of destiny. I, just, I didn't just keep quiet. So I expect you to do the same thing too. What do we call a ship that carries goods from one place to another? Cargo ship. I think sometimes it can be called freight. Yeah. What part of the day does a sunrise happen in? Um, dawn. Yeah. What part of a room is over your head? Roof. Ceiling. <laughs> Just one answer, please, people. So I think I'll go for ceiling. What do we call a piece of artificial hair worn by a judge in some courts of law? Wig. <laughs> that is straightforward, pretty easy. What do we call all the staff of a department in a college? A faculty. I think that's the answer. Yeah, the staff of a yeah, department. Yeah, in a college. Yeah. What do we call a picture sent from the post office without an envelope? Postcard. How do we describe a person who does something at the right time? Uh, perfectionist. <laughs> no, is it at the right time? Maybe punctual? Uh, perfection. Perfection is someone that wants it to be done. What do judges, solicitors, and barristers have to be experts in? Law. Yeah, it should be law. So once you hear the question and um, you just respond, I think that, um, there should be a prompt, something like a, a beep or so then you respond, but make sure that um, the, the, that up and down stuff in the exam is, has started before you say your answer, else your voice won't be picked. You know, like I've been doing, I just say the answer. So once you hear the question, just give the response if you know it. If you don't know, you can just repeat back the question or you say, I have no idea, you know, like just like what I'm doing. I'm gonna just take um, one more and then yeah, that's it. What do you call a period of 365 days? A year, 365 days, of course, is a year. 365 days makes one year. I remember that song we used to sing back in uh, primary school when they say um, seven days make one week, uh, four weeks make one month. <laughs> 365 days makes one year. 366 days makes a leap year, you know. So, yeah, so this is how this particular task is done. Just um, different questions from different sphere of life. All you need to do is um, just say the response in one word or two words. And if you don't know it, you can repeat back or you can say, no, I have no idea or no idea, but don't just keep quiet. And then and apart from that, you should also check when you can start speaking because I don't think it be, happens here. I'm just waiting for um, November 16th when PT will be changed to two hours so I can write the new PT exam. And let's see what it's like before I can, I can come out here and tell you what it's like. I have to experience it firsthand. So guys, yeah, this is how this task is done. So I've been able to show you from read aloud to repeat sentence, to describe image, um, to retell lecture, and then to answer short questions. These are the five tasks we we'll have in the PTE speaking. Now, I've been able to demonstrate it um, for you, how you can approach the task. Now I'm doing this video because I want to help someone out there that maybe you've been trying this exam and you've not been getting it. It's been a bit difficult for you. You've been trying it on your own. And then you can just go back and play this video, play it over and over again, practice with it. I mean, subscribe to my channel to do that. It's not something that is, you don't pay me money, but YouTube wouldn't ask you to pay money if you subscribe to my channel, it's free. Yeah, I know you say, what of my data? Of course it's free. The value you're getting from this video cannot be quantified. I mean, if you want to pay me for one-on-one -on -one class, you pay me more than the data you'll be burning to watch this video, okay? <laughs> Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you, how you can approach this task. Maybe as time goes on, I'll try to do some other task, you know, so, but this is the, this task, these tasks are the task in your speaking module. If you approach them this way, I have shown you in this video, then you get 19 speaking. Many of my students get 19 speaking, not because I opened their head and put the book inside. No, I just teach them. And the class is usually an interactive class. So just go on, practice it this way I have taught you. And yeah, you'll be, you'll be so Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's your favorite girl, Juliet from English Prep Class. Now in today's video, I'll basically be showing you how we can go through the five tasks 
in the PTE speaking. I'll show you how I do it, how I teach my students. And I hope you just um, play this video over and over again so you can practice it for yourself. Actually, if you do not want to pay a tutor, remember I'm a tutor, you can hire me. But if you do not want to pay a tutor, you can just go through this video, play it over and over again and know what it's like to um, practice it on your own and see how easy it is. Remember, I always leave my email address on my description so that you can contact me. Or, and my Instagram too is also on my description so you can contact me if you want further training or more coaching from me. Okay, guys, let's just delve into this video and let's see how it goes. Okay, guys, so that is me showing you how you can get 90 in PTE speaking. I know somebody will be saying, uh -uh, is that how people get 90? Yes, that is how people get 90. It's straightforward. It's not difficult. Now you can see that those tasks are doable if you if you've been um, getting below 65 or below 79 or below your desired score in the person test of English actually in the speaking you can keep playing this video over and over again and practice with it it can help you achieve your band score now you can see more of me on Instagram at English underscore prep class you can send me messages there you can follow me I have some good content that can help you and you can also follow me on Facebook where I also share valuable content. I'll see you in my next video, guys. Bye.